So my name is Eric. I'm uh, a mobile developer at Bombardier, and I'm also a uh, Google developer expert for Android. So in today's session, we are going to talk about uh, the Android system service. So I have seen that a lot of us is an Android, uh, used to be an Android developer. So what is exactly the system service? So in order to be able to understand a little bit what is the system service, it's important to understand a little bit the architecture of the Android operating system. So everything used to start from the, the bottom here. We have the, the Linux kernel because um, Android is a, a Linux-based operating system. And from the, this top here, we will see our custom application, or it can be uh, the system application or the uh, device manufacturer-based application. So if you see this uh, diagram here, you can see that uh, the Android system is basically divided in different kind of layer. So the bottom layer here used to have uh, some kernel stuff like uh, the, the, the audio, the, 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 um, the display, the camera, the, all the stuff related to the uh, device hardware. So if we try to move a little bit uh, higher, we'll try to see another layer. And on the top is the system layer, when you can find something like uh, the, the default application that we used to have on our mobile phone. And uh, this green layer is basically the Java API framework, which provides some future to the application that we used to build as an Android developer. So the system service is basically um, a system or a component or a set of components, right, that allow us to provide or to give to the top level layer some future related to the, uh, the, the, the device. So let's say you have an Android application or an Android phone that used to have, let's say, NFT, NFC cameras and all those hardware, right? So all your application can have access to all those future because the most of the time those future uh, used to be written in uh, C or C++, the low level programming language. But basically every time we used to send a notification or try to you know, play some sound using the, uh, the speaker of the phone, we use just to call um, some Java API or Kotlin API. So the system server helps us right, to provide those kind of low level future at the top level of our uh, system architecture. So uh, you may already know some uh, system service that we used to have. We have something like uh, the notification service that we can use when it comes to uh, provide some notification to the user. There is the alarm manager uh, services when it comes to, to handle all the stuff related to the alarm. There is uh, the power service, the battery service, the package manager service, etc. So um, the system service um, used to run on a separate process. So what do I mean by that? So every time you run an Android application, the application used to run on a separate process. And the system service used also to run on another process, not the one that is used to run your main application. So why do we have this kind of architecture? So running uh, the future that we want to have access in a different process than the process that we already have. So this design decision has been made, I think, for security purpose, because uh, we want to have just an architecture that will prevent other application to, be, uh, to have a direct access to all the future that are available into uh, our device. In this case, right, every single application can be run, can be ex executed in isolation from the other application. So what's happened basically? So we have the application here that used to run on its own process. And on the other side, we have the service. So it can be a notification manager service. It can be any kind of uh, service that you can have on your device. And from your application, right, you need to have access to that particular service. So what we used to have, there is a mechanism that has been made by uh, the, the, the people who designed the Android operating system. So inside your application, you will, you will have access to what we call a manager, right? the manager will delegate all the 
action that you need to have or you need to perform to the particular server. So here, for example, if I need to have access to the uh, alarm service, I will have access to the alarm manager inside my application, and that alarm manager will delegate the action that I want to perform to the, um, the specific um, uh, service that is, in, that is running on another process. So, and we used to have access to those um, manager by using this um, instruction here from a particular context. So context get system service, and you, you just need to provide the uh, the name of the, um, the, uh, the the service that you want to uh, to have access to. So basically, we used to have an architecture like this. So we have a bunch of application that are running on our application. So every single application has a manager to access a particular service. So for example, here I can have an alarm manager here. I can have a notification uh, manager here. And I can have, um, I can even have two applications that are trying to have access to the same services. Like you can see here, you only have one service, but those services can, have, can be accessed by different uh, manager. And it's even possible to have an architecture like this. So inside the same application, you have two activities. So the first one, access to the alarm manager. And the second activity, also try to access to um, the same manager. So basically here, I will have two instances of the alarm manager. But both manager will have access to uh, the same, the single instance of the service that I want to, uh, to access. To. So basically, we have um, something like this. So on the top level, we have uh, what I've called the application process. So all the process related to the application that are running on my application used to run on this uh, side. And uh, from the bottom side, we have the, the system process. So all the manager used to run basically in the same process as the, your application. So we can have something like uh, the package manager, uh, the, the storage manager, the display manager, etc. So for example, here I have the package manager and the package manager have access to a package manager service, right? And that package manager service contain the actual implementation of um, what uh, the package manager uh, can offer to the application. And the same thing for the storage here. As you can see, the, the storage manager has access to the, the mount service that have access to something else, right? So that is out of the, um, the system server process. And here the same thing for uh, the, uh, the display manager. And like I have said, right, all the system service are not uh, in the, uh, the system server process. So like you can see on this diagram here, the camera manager, for example, run in another process called the media server, right? And uh, you also have a camera manager that also delegates its, its task to the, um, um, the camera service. So like you can see here, those uh, orange line here used to, to, uh, to use the, um, uh, the binder for communication. And uh, for example, here for the mount service and the, um, the VID used to use uh, the socket uh, communication process. So in order to understand exactly how uh, the system service used to work, I think it's very important to try to explain a little bit what the process we have to follow when it's come to create your own uh, system service. So let's say you want to create a custom system service for uh, your device. So basically, um, you are using a new kind of device, right, that provide uh, some new capability that is not provided by the, uh, the default uh, Android, and you want to create your own. So the first thing you need to do is to create an um, IDL file, right? So IDL stands for Android Interface Definition Language. So it's basically a, a language, right, that helps you to define some interface that uh, the clients and the service will agree on in order to allow um, inter-processor communication. So the idea here, like I've said, the service and the uh, application itself used to run on two different uh, processes in isolation. 
So it means that your application can't have an access, a direct access to all the services provided by the application. So we need some mechanism to allow the communication between my application and the actual service. So in order to create that file, right, in Android Studio or um, in Intel EJ, you can create uh, something like, in my case, I have just used iCustomService.idl, right? And as you can see, is basically like an interface in, uh, in Java, right? You will just define uh, what you need your service to provide. So for example, here I have used something simple. I have just defined the first uh, method that will just um, take A and B, and uh, basically it will need to sum up those two values. And uh, the second one will just provide the, um, the name of that particular service. And where do we put the, uh, this file? Well, this file needs to be put in framework slash base slash core slash Java. So basically, we, you need to put that in the, the Android uh, code source. The idea behind that is because uh, this service used to be... Sorry, you have a question? Um, in the interface, the base return values need to be uh, the, the base language uh, return types, right? Yeah. It needs, trade it's, it needs to be compatible in both as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, like I was saying, right, you need to put uh, this uh, IDL file into um, the operating system. Basically, when you want to create your own uh, system service, you have to customize the, um, uh, the, Android, uh, the Android code source, the framework code source. So, after that, we need to uh, create the implementation of that interface, right? Previously, we have just created an IDL file, right? And after building your project, uh, the, the, uh, this tab uh, class will be generated for you, right? So it will be basically an interface that will have the same structure as the IDL file that we have created. And in this file, right, we can create uh, a tag, so for logging or something else. And we need just to create uh, our constructor that take the context of uh, the application. Maybe we can have access to that. And we can define an implementation of uh, our uh, get service name that's return something. For In my case, it just returned my custom service. And the same thing for uh, the, uh, the sum, uh, the add uh, function that's return just the sum of A and, uh, and B. And we did to put this implementation of this uh, file, it's, uh, it can be a Java file, we need to put it in the, um, the framework slash base slash services slash core slash Java. And we are just to make sure that uh, it's in the right package. So com.android.server. And uh, the step three, right, we need to add to refer to those uh, IDL file into uh, a file called Android M key. So in this file, right, we'll just need to put uh, the, um, the path of um, every single IDL file that we have created. So for example, here I can have something like um, iCustomService.idl, iPowerManager.idl, and so on. And we need to put, um, um, this file can be founded into a framework slash base slash uh, Android M key. So we need just to put, uh, uh, to, to make the reference to, to the file that we have created in this file in order to be, uh, to, allow the, to allow the system to be able to recognize them. And uh, after that, we need to register our uh, custom uh, service to the, um, to the service manager. So in this case, right, the user can be able to uh, utilize this uh, service to the application. So it's important to try to use a try catch because uh, from a specific reason it can, it can fail. And after doing that, right, we just need uh, this file here, the system server, it's an existing file that can be found into a uh, framework slash base slash services Java com Android server uh, package. And as you can see, we have just created an instance of our custom uh, services class that implements the, um, 
the, uh, the, the iCustom service uh, stuff that we have created, that has been generated um, previously. The step five, we need to register now um, our service into the, uh, the context. So the first thing that we need to do is basically when it's come to have access to a particular service in Android, we used to use uh, the name, right? The name of that particular service used to be defined in the, the, um, the context class. So it's basically the same thing that we are going to use. So basically we'll, try, we'll just need to open the context.java file and we'll just add this uh, context, this constant uh, value into the, that file. And then we can have access to that particular name when it's come to fetch uh, that particular service. And uh, the, the next step is to register our um, service into the, what we call the system server register. So basically in this uh, step, we'll try to define the link between the manager, right, and the actual service. So for example, here, like you can see, the, we just need to call the, um, the register server inside this particular class. And the first parameter that we, go, we need to provide to this uh, class is the name of the service. So the name that we have created previously. And secondly, we, we just need to define the manager. So like I have said, uh, into our application, we don't have access to the service directly, but we have access to the manager. And the manager will delegate its action to the actual service. And by doing this, right, we create kind of a relationship between um, the particular, uh, the, the, the manager and the, the, um, the service itself. And here, we can just uh, create the instant of the manager. So I forgot to put uh, the parentheses, so if you run this, it should probably fail. <laughs> and after the registration, Okay, like I was, I was saying, we need to put uh, in this file, and this file can be found in the, the framework, framework slash base slash core slash Java slash Android slash app. So it's an existing file. We just need to modify it by adding this uh, new line in order to be able to register uh, your, your service. So next, we need to create a manager, right? Like I have said previously, the idea behind the manager is to be able to, uh, to allow your application to be able to interact with uh, the particular service. And in this case, right, for the sake of the demonstration, we can just create a, a small file that I can, I, think I can call the custom service manager.java and I need just to put the, this into a framework slash base slash course slash Java slash Android slash OS. So it's very important to follow this kind of pattern because um, the service itself, right, used to run in uh, some level of permission that the, your application don't have. So that's why we need to do all this uh, registration stuff. And after that, inside the, the custom service manager, the first thing that we need to create is an instance of our uh, service. So by default, it will, be, it will be null. And what we are going to do, first thing, we will try to check if um, my service, it's, uh, it's not null, so it will return directly it. If it's not, I will create it. And in order to create the, the, the instance of my service, I will just need to call the service manager, which is responsible of um, having access to all the service that I can have. And after that, I can create the instance of uh, the service based on the custom, the uh, iCustom service stub that has been generated. And I can just call the as interface and I will just prove to provide the, the binder. And by doing this, right, my service will be created. And for some reason also, for different reason, it can uh, crash. That's why it's important to put it into uh, the try catch block. And after the instance of the service has been created, I just need to, um, to return it from this uh, get service uh, method. And like I have said previously, um, the manager is not doing anything, right? Like you can see here, the actual implementation of the get service name is just a delegation to the method that is present 
into my service. So for example, every time the user will try to, uh, to call the, the, the method get service name from the manager, basically it will, the, the manager will delegate that call to, uh, to the, the, the actual service. And the same thing for uh, the ads. So for example, if I put, um, if I try to call the, the ad method uh, from the manager, it will basically delegate uh, this call to the service call. And at the last step, I just need to showcase how the manager, the actual manager can be accessed from my application. So like I've said previously, in order to have access to the service, I need to, to use the get system service. It's a pretty popular uh, method in Android from a particular context. So you can use it from, uh, let's say, an activity. And you can get access to your context by defining the name of the, uh, the service that we have defined in the context class. And uh, since the, uh, the object that this uh, method used to return is the generic one, you just need to cast it to uh, our manager. And as you can see, inside the application, I can't have access directly to the, uh, the service that have been created. But the manager of that particular service helped me to have access to that um, uh, particular um, service. And here, I can call manager.getServiceName. And by doing this, basically, I will delegate the action of this call to the underlying, uh, to the service. And it can be the same thing here. And that is uh, basically it when it's come to create uh, a custom service. So the idea behind the, the mechanism of uh, service and manager is what I have explained are these particular slides. <coughs> Where is it? Okay, I think it's this one, right? So uh, our application used to be uh, on this side of the, um, the process, if I can, I can say like that. It will be running uh, on its own process, right? And like I have said, an application can have several instances of um, a particular manager, right? And that manager is supposed to provide to us some set of future that we will need to, uh, to have. So it can be, for example, the notification manager, uh, the camera manager, the display manager, the storage manager, uh, whatever. And every time we use to call a specific method of a particular manager, basically it will do all the things that I've just explained. It will try to delegate the action uh, of that call to the particular service that has been linked to that particular manager. And it will be the same thing for any kind of manager. And uh, the idea be behind uh, this separation here is uh, what we call the, the, the sandbox thing. So it means that your application and the service that your device is supposed to provide to your application used to run separately in two different processes. And for security purpose, right, your application is not supposed to have a direct access to the memory of um, every single service that uh, your application can um, can provide. Okay, question? You're not wrapping the intent? Sorry? You're not wrapping the, the interaction with an intent to be that target from like intent filters and stuff like that as well? As well. No, so in this particular case, um, the intent are not involved, right? Because, uh, for example, uh, I think that there is basically some use case where they, uh, you can use uh, a mechanism similar to the intents. For example, you can use something like the binder. But for this particular case, when you want to create a, um, uh, a um, what I can say, a custom service, right? You, used to, you need to use this mechanism because why? From the uh, application process, right? You will not have the same uh, level of access 
than uh, the service itself. That is why it's important to put kind of a separation between uh, both, both of them in order to have access. For example, in the system server rights, there is some action that I can do that I can't have access from the application uh, uh, from the application uh, server because those are two different processes and those processes are what I can say two different level of accreditation if I can say like that. So that is basically it. So my talk my talk was uh, quite short and uh, thank you. <laughs>